my name is Ian Bacon. Do you are I from another planet? Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And, and, and honestly, given the strength of this video, you want to be notified. This was a good one. This was going to be a fun one. Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, uh, last week I, I did, uh, late last week, I did a review of the new Doctor Who magazine special. Uh, where is it? This thing over here, this thing over here, uh, uh, yeah, good, and it was actually pretty darn good, listen, it's about writing, I like writing, I find it interesting, I, I write, <laughs> I write and draw comic books, you know, that's basically, yeah, that's one of the things I do, and I find it interesting, so I, I, you know, I've been, stay, I've been avoiding um, the specials, because the quality of Doctor magazine in general has been just very weak of late, you know, it's been, yeah, filler upon filler upon filler, I, 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 I'm just not interested, but I saw this one, I'm like, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty I'll give it a try again. And I'm really glad I did, right? I am really glad I did because it was actually really good. But, but, uh, uh, there was two pages in it, which is just, you know, I think, comedy gold. Absolutely comedy gold. Uh, uh, what this, what it basically is, is different people uh, talking about different eras, different writers in Doctor Who and their importance within Doctor Who. Uh, again, all that stuff I freaking love uh, until somebody gets the short straw and they had to write about the current era. Now, I, I want to be clear. If you like the current era, God bless you. I'm really happy for you to like it. I am. I really don't, right? I really... Oh, that's a bit... Let me change the angle. That's a bit, a bit better. You know, I really don't enjoy it at all. Uh, I'm really happy for anybody to like it. But, you know, I, I think it's fair to say it hasn't been an unqualified success. You know, it's like... I don't think it's, it's unified fans uh, in love of it. I mean, maybe unified fans in, in, in their hatred of it, but not their love of it. So, so uh, uh, they, they bring somebody in to uh, write a color paid article on, on the on the current era. They can't not, really. It would be so weird and noticeable if they didn't. Uh, 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 and it's just, I, I don't know, they, they, they're they regurgitating the corporate speak. And you can kind of see how this uh, uh, complete implosion of Doctor Who has happened, right, from reading it. So we're going to read it together. We're going to have a bit of a giggle. We're going to have a bit of a giggle, because that's what we do here. We like to have a bit of a giggle. Look, we live in a strange world. We live in a, a, a reasonably disturbing world, I would say, right? A reasonably disturbing world. Uh, uh, I think the best thing you can do uh, is have a bit bit of a giggle at it. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, before you anyway, if you can like, share, subscribe, that's fantastic. I'm about 10 subscribers away now from 3,000. That'll be fantastic. Be double dose again. Please don't tell YouTube. Nobody tell YouTube. Because uh, uh, we want to... I want to... I don't know why I want to get a 3,000. I want to get a 30,000. I want to get a 50,000. I, I, I want to get a 300,000. But I want to get to 3,000 first. So if you can hit the subscribe button, that'd be great. Uh, if you're subscribed, please make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube, take subscribers off. That's why I tell you, don't mention it to YouTube. It's, it's, it's a method in the matter. So like, share, subscribe. Comment, comment. It's great. I just spent a long time answering everybody's comments for the last two days. I'm, I'm, I'm offline on Saturday, so I, I get... I, uh, uh, yeah, if you comment, I will. I will endeavour to to reply to you. Yeah, honestly, I like hearing what you have to say. I, I call it crazy. Call me a crazy, uh, yeah, a crazy old traditionalist. Uh, and finally, check out my Indigo. Go check out my Indigo, which I'm desperately trying to finish. Right, I'm, I want to finish this campaign. I want to mail it out. Uh, I got one one piece of artwork. I got it in hand. I got to do a bit of post production on it so I can uh, you know uh, uh, launch the 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 end of the uh, launch the end of the campaign and then launch the new one. That's really where we are, but I'm finding time. It's been an absolute torture, I, you know, I, and I really want to do it. I want to mail this stuff out to your ASAP, so check out the Indigo. They are, it, it, it's a good campaign, if I may say so myself. Two great graphic novels. We've got this one, biblical, 220 pages long. Freaking awesome! Freaking awesome! Bible stories of creatures, creatures, uh, rationalists, and rogues. It's uh, uh, very biblically accurate, but I would say not preachy, but, you know, that, that's just one man's opinion for you. And given I'm the one man who wrote and drew it, oh! I think I'm, pro I'm probably qualified to say. It's like, I, listen, I, I'm re really happy if you agree with me completely with my worldview. You know, that, that, I, I, everybody likes that, but I don't really need you to. It's not like, oh, no. But it, it's basically, I just think, a, a pretty good, interesting story. Uh, uh, 220 pages long, 180 pages of story, and then we got uh, uh, The Imperium, a love letter to telefantasy of the 1960s. Uh, um, uh, defending the 1960s from uh, Threats Beyond Reality, basically a monkey in a spacesuit, uh, James Bond, Doctor Who, Emma Peel, and the Black Slap from 2001 in one mind bending, reality bending, uh, 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 you know, narrative uh, with uh, cameos and appearances of uh, the prisoner and lots and lots of toilet paper. That's actually quite important, isn't it? <laughs> lots of toilet paper. You get both, get a bunch of extras. You know, you know the drill. I tell, I tell you about the extras all the time uh, for, for for the male gaze gaze cards, a bunch of cards. 
There will be seven, by the way. Seven in the campaign. One time. I got, I'm sitting on a piece of artwork. It's really great. I just need it. And get it done. Uh, find time. If, listen, if anyone's got a time machine out there, I don't want to travel in time. I just want an extra eight hours in the day. If I get an extra eight hours in the day for one freaking week, I could do incredible things. Uh, like take take a vacation. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. For for the Bell Gaze Guards, uh, uh, that, that was fantastic. If I may say so myself. Uh, uh, yeah, and also uh, uh, yeah, my, the, this one has been unbelievably popular, especially you know with May Fourth last week. So you get all those. If we hit eight grand, I think we will. Uh, everybody gets this A two poster, uh, a Bohemian Time of Space. We got add-ons. Uh, uh, the eyes have it. Great balls of fire and forever young. Forever young. I might might do some of the Mel Gaze ones. As post as well because i mean look you know why that would be a pretty darn good poster if i may say so so i don't know listen if you want it let's let me know you know i'm really <laughs> i am quite flexible as apparently is princess Lear over here quite flexible uh a chap of the hut seems quite happy about that and so so he should fine so there we go uh, uh let's look at this uh this article fine. so there we go uh here uh again I recommend this special. If you like writing, this is a really good and this great interview with Stephen Moffat. I'm going to do, do look, I'm doing videos on, on a lot of the content from this, this magazine. So you, 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 you'll be able to see, see for yourself. But again, this one is a recommend. Uh, uh, and this part, again, they had to put it in. They totally had to put it in. But the comedic gold, the comedic gold that comes out of this is fantastic. So we have Emma Reeves. I'm not sure who she, her name rings a bell. I've heard her around uh yeah i'm not sure but she was given the job of uh, waxing lyrical about uh, 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 Chris Chibnall's uh, impact on Doctor Who and he has that's me sure a uh, quite a significant impact on Doctor Who so uh poor girl poor girl you know just giving an impossible job uh let's see what the, the headline was uh Emma Reeves looks at the Doctor Doctor Who work of Chris Chibnall the writer takes the series in a bold new direction yes into the toilet uh, <laughs> that was a really bold direction. We're going to make it suck and everybody hate it. Really? That's, that's a great idea, Chris. That's, uh, 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 and I think he, he delivered upon that, didn't he? I think we could, I think it's fair to say. Christian Mills, uh, Christian Mills, Doctor Who, uh, Christian Mills, Doctor Who is a work in progress. Well, I, you know, I listen, I really feel for this woman because I, she, I, I can't, she's got to spin this. It's a work, it is a work in progress, but so far the progress has been dire, <laughs> right? Like, you know, like a work in progress. I mean, listen, so is the Biden administration. I, 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 wherever you are in politics, really? <laughs> like, you know, maybe the streets burning isn't the best of things. And, you know, unlimited kids in unlimited cages. Oh, you make your own choices up. But yeah, a work in progress. Okay, you know, so's Pol Pot's regime. I, I think, yeah, not, not it, it, I mean, I guess that's, that, that, that work in progress has finished. But, uh, uh, you know, during the progress, wasn't a lot of fun. Wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, so Christian was talking about the work of progress. Yes, it's unfolding. He has pointed out, according to a plan that was conceived and pitched. At, actually, he's saying a plan that was conceived, uh, conceived and pitched. Uh, uh, well, conceived. Uh, I think it was about in the 80s, around the time he was on open air. Uh, what was it open air? Berating John Nathan Turner and Pip and Jane Baker. You've got to see that clip. He is so obnoxious. And I think that destroyed his life, really. I think that notoriety really destroyed his life and made him into uh, uh, the arsehole that he clearly is. Although, I get, listen, I got to be fair. I got to be fair. I got to be honest. Uh, I know somebody, uh, I spoke to somebody who knows him personally, a contemporary of his, somebody who's worked with and for him. And, and this person, uh, I think, uh, uh, seemed like he was telling the truth to me, seemed like he was being honest, said, Christian Roll is the nicest guy ever. I, I, okay, L I, listen, I, I really don't want to uh, detract from that. Uh, uh, but he seems like an arsehole to me. Like, just looking at his work, seems like he seems like an arsehole. I, 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 I call him as I see him, mate. What can I tell you? Um, so, yeah, so this plan was conceived when he was a kid. And you can kind of tell, can't you? You can kind of... So there's a combination of that, and I think it was a, a corporate BBC double talk, you know, where where reality and uh, uh, the, the, the stunning and brave uh, uh, plan on, on the page really do not link up whatsoever, which is, I think, it was a lot we're going to talk about here. Um, 
And when the BBC was before Jodie Whittaker was even announced as the 13th Doctor in 2007. Listen, it, this was, a, this was uh, as far as I can tell, what he always said, he came up with a specific idea of what he wanted to do. Uh, uh, and, and, yeah, so many of these ideas were bad, right? So many of these ideas were bad. Uh, like, like the, the, like. Well, again, we're going to talk about it in detail when they go, when you know, when they go through it. But so many of the, these ideas were just terrible. I think the only idea they did like was that they would uh, make Doctor Who a little less white and male, right? I think because that was the thing that was really that is really important to BBC in 2017 and 2021, right? We are saying, yeah, I there, there was an I could have done a ton of different videos today. There was an article I think in the Daily Mail about complaining about Line of Duty saying. It was kind of a crap ending. I don't think it was any worse than normal, quite frankly. Uh, and uh, but saying everything the BBC does is crap now. I'm like, well, you can't really argue with that. Um, but I, I thought this, 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 this sounded more fun instead. Um, fine. So we worked out in 2017. Having worked out his strategy, Chibnall spent several weeks developing the ideas in the creative setting of of a writers' room. This sounds like. Uh, um, this was to make Chris Chibnall feel good about himself. Like, if you have a writer's room, uh, first you give people who are entirely unqualified to be be there. And people have, like, little to no propensity for science fiction uh, writing it. I mean, another part of the book, of, of this uh, magazine, they have the writers of the of the current era. And, and you know, they're all, you know, they're all apart from one white women, and so they have one black woman, right? Uh, uh, and given that this has been the least popular era of all time, it doesn't say, you know, a, a, you know, a great amount, you know, a great stuff for uh, uh, being, uh, uh, you know, for equality. <laughs> really, does it? Not really. No. Uh, uh, anyway, so he, you know, so I think the writers' room was a it makes him feel good because everybody's got to basically kiss his ass because they they they're inexperienced writers who shouldn't be there. Uh, uh, so yeah, they're like, oh yeah. I think they're all trying very hard. They're all very excited, uh, and also he feels good because they're all not white men, right? Or they're mostly not white men so he feels like oh very elevated by it. that's all right that's why i think it's going on with the writer's room um nobody was uh nobody in it was previously known for writing doctor who or its multimedia spin-offs yes and doesn't it show right doesn't it show i think the closer they came to real doctor who um May have been Joy Wilkinson, uh, and I think I think Joy Wilkinson under Russell D. Davis, Stephen Moffat would have put out a decent script, and uh, Pete Matigue as well. I think they would have uh, under good direction. They would have put out a, a decent script. Uh, other than that, phew, they've been pretty darn bad, haven't they? I mean, uh, VJ Patel. Oh my God, I, I've never I've never seen anything quite as bad as his Doctor Who. It's it's, it's breathtakingly awful. Or, or, uh, awful. Uh, so yeah, no one's believed no for writing Doctor Who or his multimedia spin-off. Uh, breaking with the precedent set by uh, previous shows of Rossley David and Stephen Moffat. Remember, those successful showrunners, right? The ones who are able to do the job well and successfully. Yeah, unlike uh, 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 Mr. Chibnall, uh, whose script teams included writers who had uh, were already familiar to fans. Yeah, and again, already familiar to and had a love and understanding of Doctor Who. I again, if you watch... Uh, the uh, uh, the Blu-ray uh, was it the collection? You got, there's a thing called uh, Behind the Sofa where they have I think it's called Behind the Sofa. We have different teams of people watching the store the classic stories, and one of them they they do normally have like new era people in the in the uh, the latest uh, John Pertwee set season what was it seven I think season seven season eight no season eight um, it's quite good. It's got um, Sasha Dewan who just is the bursting with enthusiasm for the role of the mark it's so excited about it and i just really like it and uh angelina uh angeli Mor 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 i can't remember her name the woman from uh sarah jane adventures and a bunch of big finish and a very embarrassing turn in uh in the jody Whittaker doctor who playing the scorpion queen thing oh god it was awful it was freaking awful um, but yeah, they were really good. But they're not previous ones. They had Pete Matigue and Joy Wilkerson, and you can just see Joy Wilkerson having no clue, no clue whatsoever what's flying. Um, however, in common with the press, the Chibnall assumed the role of show uh, who, uh, 
Jim Ross showed the role show number with an all, all, um, uh, enormous weight of expectation upon him. Expectations, I think he hasn't really met. I think, to be fair, it's, he, he, I think it's fair to say he hasn't really met those expectations now, has he? Uh, uh, all three were highly acclaimed, uh, you know, you know award-winning writers at the top of their profession. That's true. I thought Chibnall would work out well. I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed how much he's exceeded my expectations of how bad he is. Um, and they're also long-term Doctor Who fans with detailed knowledge of the show's extensive history. Yeah, again. Color me surprise. Uh, at the end, at the end of his appointment, uh, uh, Chibnall was uh, well. At the time of his appointment, Chibnall was a particularly hot pop, having scored a huge creator uh, and sole writer of uh, of Broad Touch. Yeah, did very. He was doing very well for himself. Uh, he had returned to Doctor Who, previously written for the tenth and I think were the eleventh Doctors. Let me, who, who was it? Uh, tenth, tenth, and, and eleventh Doctors, and uh, acted as a de facto lead writer on Torchwood, uh, where his episodes contain some of the uh, most family unfriendly moments, including Day One's sex gas. Yeah, that was crap. And uh, the rural uh, uh, cannibals of, of countryside. Yeah, also, also not not uh, n not not the best ones. Oh, I like season two of Torchwood. I thought that was pretty darn good, and that I think was mainly Chip. I again. I don't know how, I, I, yeah, how he's he, how he screwed up so badly. Uh, the gritty, mo morally uh, compromised tone of early Torchwood and Deep Broad Church uh, couldn't have been further away from Chibnall's opening season uh, as Doctor Who showrunner The Woman Fell to Earth. Yeah, I, those things were reasonably enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one big difference. Those things were reasonably enjoyable, whereas uh, his opening season, Doctor Who, was awful. Uh, uh, but still better than the, his second season of Doctor Who, which was even worse, right? Even worse. Um, the one felt it worth introducing a new user-friendly, helpful, smiling, rainbow-shirted Doctor to a Sheffield fan. Wait, okay, let's stop. Not, she was not user-friendly, she was a moron. I like, I, I, and again, you see it now, what, watching it back, if you can bear watching it back, that she was played as a moron from the beginning. Uh, uh, rainbow shirted. That wasn't just oh, I'm just colourfully, colourful, oh, yeah, properly rainbow person like Colin Baker's. Like, no, that was say. Listen, I'm down with the uh, with the T people. I'm down with the T's, and you know, obviously the LB, uh, yeah, LBG. But I love the T's. The T's because the T's are the uh, the cause du jour in 2018. And so and they still are today. We're just all a bit sick of them, really. Uh, uh, so yeah, so uh, smiling and and stupid. I think uh, her. Sheffield Fab. So now, now we again. I can just imagine uh, Chibnall pitching this to uh, the executives at the BBC, and them all getting so excited. Right? They're all getting so excited uh, to her fam, Muslim police officer Yaz. Why they put in that she's Muslim? Right? I, I, like how? I, how has that been relevant to her character? As I, I mean, they shoehorned in that she was bullied uh, 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 because she was Muslim towards the end of her second season. Uh, yeah, I, I, but that didn't really make sense because she was from Yorkshire, right? Yorkshire, reasonably Muslim. I mean, I, and again, I don't think most people do get bullied for their ethnicity. I mean, in 2020, 2021, I, I think it, it, yeah, people go, I people are like, I, what's wrong with you? Are you weird? <laughs> I like, 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 it's just strange. Uh, so Muslim police officer Yaz, uh, wi widow cancel so well he wasn't widowed at the beginning. Widow cancel survivor Graham and his stepson, uh, dyspraxic teenager Ryan. Why don't they put black? Wait, wait. There's mu you can put Muslim for Yaz, but you can't put black for Ryan. Uh, and did they forget? They basically forgot the whole dyspraxia thing uh, after his first episode and right up until. His last episode, last few minutes of the last episode. Um, like two episodes later, he was like doing, you know, uh, doing an assault calls, doing uh, tucks and rolls and taking out all these robots. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, okay. And he couldn't ride a bike a day earlier. Um, so yeah, now it gets bad. Uh, inclusive in terms of age, heritage, and neurodiversity. So uh, let me, uh, well, let me just read further before uh, 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 we, 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 uh, we move on to my critique. Neurodiversity. This new team sent out a clear message. This show was for everybody. Okay, I understand that was a message. I understand that was a message. Where'd they all go? Why are less people watching then if it's more relatable to more people? 
You see, here, this is where the corporate speak falls apart. And we're seeing it more and more and more throughout the world, right? We're seeing the corporate speak, uh, I, I, yeah, you know, they said yeah, the, the previous president was the worst person ever. He put children in cages. And now there are more children in more cages. Ah, but it, yeah, it, like it, it, yeah, this is where the corporate speak just doesn't match reality. And, and yeah, I'm reminded of uh, what was it? Remember the Thirty Rock, uh, where um, what's his name? John Donaghy. Uh, um, I'll say the actor. Anyway, goes go, goes goes to Hollywood. Uh, not Hollywood. Goes to Washington. And there's a there's the you know the he's in an office and it's there's a drip coming from the ceiling. And he's like, well, we did the, we need to fix it. He said, oh no, there's no drip there. His assistant said, "What? Well, I can see it. So, no, we had a report done. There are, there's no drip there. It's all fine, right? And that's, yeah, exactly. This is it. This is exactly this. Uh, if it's if it's a show for everyone, why does everybody? Why did everybody say goodbye? I, I really think that's an important question you need to answer, right? I mean, you first said, well, it's because we didn't have enough uh, uh, traditional monsters in it. Well, let's, let's, let's go forward. Let's go forward to see, see more of their desperate, uh, uh, desperate excuses. In particular, the season was designed to appeal to new viewers. Did it? Did it, did it get new viewers and retain them? I don't think it did. I think it got uh, new viewers on the first episode. Uh, and then it, it systematically lost them over every episode of the show, lost more and more and more and more until they brought in Captain Jack. <laughs> you know, they, they kept losing losing ground until they brought in uh, uh, a white male. <laughs> Apparently so. Uh, 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 yeah, and that's just what yeah, just what happened. So uh, yeah, is it, it did it appeal to you? I don't think it. I don't think it appeals to anyone really. Uh, all writers know that after a certain a certain amount of time, characters and shows can yeah. Uh, can be in danger of getting bogged down by their own past. Right, 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 right. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, how's that working out? <laughs> like, like uh, wouldn't you rather it be bogged down by its own past with the past where people used to watch it? In fact, I do recall, all right, uh, um, in the wake of the absolute disastrous reception of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, uh, we had this thing called Time Lord Victorious, which was seemed to be, let's bog, let's bog us down in our own past, and maybe you'll buy some of this crap. Unfortunately, it still was, it still had the same core problems as the rest of Doctor Who. Uh, previous showrunners have been at pains to emphasize that, yes, it is all one long story. The Doctor uh, first appeared in, in the Totters Lane junkyard in, I'm going to say 1963, hopefully. Oh, is that the end of the, in, oh yeah, very good. Five, we're one page down of this nonsense. Um... In 1963, it's the same being who tells Rose Tyler to run. Uh, yeah, listen, I, 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 I do agree with that. Yeah, you know, it, it, I think Ralph Steve Davis really had the perfect balance. He found it, I think, in season two and three, 70% new, 30% old, right? Uh, have that nice balance. And that really worked. That really worked. Uh, uh, so, and then along came Chibnall and said, yeah, that's working. Let's tear it up. Um, 1963 is a uh, 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 being told Rose to run, Rose Tyler to run, makes Amelia Pond cook, cook him uh, fish fingers and custard, and crashes uh, from the sky, uh, uh, sky onto the fan. Well, they do. They are at great pains to to try and connect this doctor to previous doctors because the previous doctors were what we like to call. It, it is in marketing. This is the marketing jargon. It might be a bit much for you. The previous doctors are well, what we call um, popular. <laughs> Well, well, this is bollocks. <laughs> this is bollocks. Uh, dealing with the weight of the six years of continuity is potentially daunting for anyone uh, except hardcore fans. So occasionally hitting the reset button has become necessary. Yeah, again, Rusty Davis did it uh, more than once, actually. I think uh, uh, Moffat did it as well. Uh, uh, yeah, his run was basically a reboot. You know, they kept they said, well, they don't remember the you know the Daleks over Canary Wharf. Yeah, it's fine, but it was a soft reboot, right? It wasn't like uh, uh, in in script uh, tearing up of the entirety of Doctor Who law, right? Oh, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, as we come next, here, the woman of Felsenworth, the fam had no prior knowledge of the uh, Time Lords, uh, Gallifrey, humankind. Uh, many brushes with there we go. Humankind, many brushes. Uh, uh, with, with destruction by alien major, which means you just didn't need to see, uh, didn't need to either. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem. Uh, of course, this wasn't the first soft reboot of the show. Uh, Moffat used uh, well, again. Well, yeah, she's doing her best. Emma Reeves, you're doing your best. You're doing sterling work here. 
Um, uh, Moffat used a similar technique in the 11th hour, using the Kraken time to break with the narrative continuity where the people of Earth were uh, too aware of Dalek side men. Uh, yeah, listen, you can't, you, yeah, you can't have it being reflective of the current world we live in uh, uh, and have people know about everything. You know, it, it just doesn't work. I get it. I 100% get it. Um, uh, but again, it was it wasn't uh, explicit. It was implicit because uh, Stephen Moffat is what we call good, a good writer. Where uh, and, and listen, I understand a lot of people don't like the Moffat years. I, I he but technically speaking, he's a very strong writer. He just is, and uh, uh, yeah, he's probably one of the best uh, uh, script writers working in the UK today. I would say, yeah, I, uh, yes, I think that that, that I'm going to make that pronouncement. Uh, Moffat set up a series, uh, a series of mysteries of increasing complexity that would be entirely resolved. Uh, there wouldn't be entirely resolved until, until the end of the Eleventh Doctor era. Yes, but he didn't make the whole thing like hit you over the head on it constantly, right? And he didn't. It, there was one real dangling plot thread from um, his first season to the second season, which. Uh, <sighs> Wasn't that big a problem, right? It, there, there wasn't like uh, uh, Moffat's for uh, uh, Criminal's first season where the dangling pot thread was we're doing something incredibly boring for every episode, right? Uh, and having no connection to anything to do with Doctor Who. Uh, uh, yeah, it probably wasn't the best of ideas. Uh, um, and I remember the end of Moffat's here. We, I think everyone was ready for a bit of like a, a, a change of tone. I, I I agree with him. It just it doesn't help that it was crap, right? It just doesn't help that it was crap. Uh, about mysteries uh, resolved until the eleventh era, when the fracture uh, in Amy's wall was finally explained as the doctor uh, as the doctor came to an end of his regeneration cycle and grafted a whole new one. No, I thought it was the crack was from the exploding TARDIS. Wasn't it? I, I see. Listen, I love the Matt Smith era and the Capaldi era. I, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, this will guarantee a more life provided uh, some. I'm pretty sure it was from the exploding TARDIS, the crack, right? That, that was the. Wasn't that what they said? And I think the uh, uh, they then used the crack as a uh, as a way as a way of like giving him extra lives. But I don't think that was what it what. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, a few through the Doctor in universe least, but Chibnall had a much bigger scheme in mind. How's that work out, Chibs? How's that bigger scheme working out? Again, your plan uh, 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 isn't really that successful. He planned up here. Here we come. We, here we get the corporate speak, right? The corporate speak is also important. Uh, he planned to open up the mythology to more stories by uh, creating a potentially limitless uh, past and future lives for the Doctor. Um again again yeah so what you did you took all the stakes out of the character you made the character boring you made if the car if the doctor is limitless is infinite right the, then everybody's a doctor and that's basically everyone's gonna see themselves as a doctor. yeah it, 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 but it's that it makes the character dull makes it boring and it makes it so people don't watch it uh, how do i know this what what's my proof that nobody that that people aren't that interested in it the viewing figures you moron for goodness sake, I mean, like, again, I, I I understand you're in your office, you're in your, like, corporate office going, yeah, we're going to uh, open it up to mythology of more stories, like, using all the corporate bull, bull crap. It didn't work, and you have egg all over your face, or I would say more you have pooped your pants, mate. You have pooped your pants uh, uh, in such a massive way. Uh, uh, I don't think anybody has quite pooped their pants. So, like, maybe Kathleen Kennedy... Right, but here, Kathleen Kennedy has the same, same, same attitude as Chibnall. Is like, just go, no, nope, we're great. We're gonna keep doing the same crap because we're wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Ghost Monument, the remnants warned the Doctor about the timeless child. How? How did these little stri uh, 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 scraps of uh, of cloth know about the timeless child? How? He said. This is the problem with the Chibnall era entirely. They go for the mic drop. They go for the 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 like the wow moment, and they don't know bloody thought into it. We see the picture of Joe Martin's doctor, uh, who was uh, 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 notable for being far far better than Jodie Whittaker's doctor. But the way they discover her, well, it was I exactly the same. Was no thought went into it. Jodie Whittaker's doctor is digging and digging. She finds the TARDIS buried, uh, 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 but then they didn't think it through enough. They can't get into the TARDIS. They have to teleport in. Uh, it's 
just stupid because you don't think it through. Because all you're thinking is, oh, I'm going to have a black woman be the doctor. And that's the reality of it, right? That is entirely the reality of it. So, yeah, how did they know? How did these remnants know about the timeless child? Uh, no, who cares? Who cares? And anyway, it's never going to be answered. Uh, fascinated about this, uh, what this meant for the doctor, but uh, I just think it's a line he threw in, quite frankly. I don't think he, uh, honestly, uh, I, I just don't think enough thought went into this. But unexpectedly, this hint was not picked up in in the season finale. Instead, yeah, the season finale was garbage, right? Remember that was like the the planet with the super super power. Oh god, it was so boring. Ah. Oh. Uh, still better than this next second year. Uh, we're not picked up as Instead, it was held over until the next season, which would feature the return of Captain Jack, the Dune, Side Men, and the Master, and a surprise version of Doctor Who, unlike the War Doctor, was unknown even to the Doctor himself. And again, nonsense that's never been, that's not explained, right? And, and I, I guarantee you, whatever explanation they come up with will we'll, we'll, we'll flat on its face because he's not very good. The true purpose of season 11 uh, was to provide a welcoming space for all. And again, what happened? They didn't, did, did people come and go, oh, thank you, thank you for making me feel welcome. Did that go down? No. People went, uh, catch you later. This is awful, right? Uh, but it wasn't until your next year where people went, oh, this is really awful. Um... To quote one of the series' promotional taglines uh, before, uh, 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 was it, auditionally extending that, spa uh, that space uh, as a story to the Chibnall reveals in confounding expect expectations of setting false trails. It's not setting false trails. He just forgets. It doesn't give a crap because he's useless. A deceptively simple uh, series of uh, continuously like historical and sci-fi adventures were followed by a series of uh, uh, that took the opposite approach Almost as if he was massively course correcting after he saw his incredible failure. Right, right. And I think that's what what, what really went down, uh, which gave the opposite approach, uh, uh, diving deep into fan lore and apparently rewriting the show's very DNA. And then what? We have to wait till series thirteen to find out. I, again, I don't really. I think it had the effect of decanonizing Doctor Who of, of his Doctor Who. Right? I genuinely think that's what I had to do. And again, oh man, I feel sorry for Sasha Dewan, right? I really do. I like, he, he loves this role, although he's written much more as a meddling monk than the master, but you know, I get, it looks more like the meddling monk than master, but he has so much love for the role. And, and listen, people hated the cyber, uh, cyber masters, uh, well, the cyber laws, whatever they were called. I quite like them. I thought it was gonna, I love this design of Cybermen as well. It's just like, oh, wasted. Wasted on this utter garbage. So Emma Reeves, uh, 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 well done. Well done. You were given the impossible job. The impossible job of trying to explain uh, the travesty that is Chris Chibnall's Doctor Who. And he did it by not really explaining it at all, right? That was you. You just said, well, I'll just talk out the, uh, 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 you yeah, know, the, 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 the bulb crap uh, corporate document that Chris Chibnall gave, gave, gave to uh, uh, the BBC, right? I'll just talk it out and I won't really have to justify it. It's two pages. We'll put a bunch of pictures in. We'll make them big. Maybe that'll do the trick. And Emma, it did. My yeah, sterling work, I have to say. Well done. Uh, uh, you managed to defend it without defending it because it's indefensible. My name is Cena Beck and you are the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share and subscribe and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.